everybody. What's up? Welcome to another Fuse Meet session. I hope you're all doing really well out there in the cryptoverse. Today, you're here with me, Ian Kane, And in this session, we'll be speaking with the CPO at Odin, Alon Vecker. So developed by a team of seasoned IT security and distributed season, uh, systems professionals, Odin is a really innovative security and insurance platform that's kind of striving to protect and insure crypto wallets against losses resulting from malicious behavior. So it's a very relevant product, a very timely product, and we're here today to dive into that and talk all about it. But how are you doing, Alan? I've got you here today. Are you good? Yeah, perfectly well. Thanks. Actually, it's the 2nd of September, and as a parent, it's amazing time. It's like waited for it like two months. <laughs> <laughs> are you talking? Yeah, because now they finally go back to school, right? Yeah. Finally. <laughs> no we're having the same thing here actually it's a very big deal where i am and everybody's uh you can see people smiling in the streets <laughs> yeah <laughs> like a week ago it was everyone like oh come on <laughs> oh, how much longer can i do this for yeah yeah right but uh no it's good to hear good to hear that you're having a good week and um uh, not because you got rid of your children but just because you know they they've gone off to do something more interesting right for the week so it's yeah. fine all right, so we're here with, with Alan today to talk about Odin. And um, the first step of the collaboration with Fuse Network has involved integrating the security tech into Fuse's multi chain bridge on Voltage Finance. So, we're talking about security, we're talking about bridges. So, this upgrade will enable the bridge to pause transactions that involve withdrawing funds from Fuse Network to Ethereum or BNB chain. And that's if they show abnormal characteristics determined by Odin's Oracle network. So we're going to dive into it and we're going to get deep on it and you guys are going to be able to understand exactly what we're talking about here and why this is a very cool solution. But for those of you that don't already know, maybe this is the first time you've tuned into a Fuse Network session, Fuse is a really unique blockchain. We're aiming to bridge the gap between crypto and the real world. The tech stack that we've built along, well, that we've built and are building upon and our new charge products is tailored to help small to medium sized businesses embrace Web3 crypto payments also reduce their costs and help them with building out better customer rewards and loyalty systems. And all with a very minimal knowledge of smart contracts, which a lot of you will be very pleased to hear. So moreover, Fuse is also an EVM compatible smart contract blockchain, similar to Polygon or BNB chain. It's capable of lightning fast transactions and a gas visa under one cent. So we also just launched an article called uh, 10 reasons to build dApps on Fuse. So we really encourage the developer community to check that out and see the different reasons as to why and maybe have a go. So with that in mind and the tech stack, it's time to welcome today's guest, Alon, and dive into Odin AI. So Alon, before we get really deep into this technical side of things, tell me about yourself a little bit. How have you ended up in this nuts blockchain crypto world? Um, yeah, man, How, who are you? Tell, tell me about um... yourself. Yeah, and by the way, hopefully by the end of this call, we will add the 11th reason to develop. <laughs> uh, well, about myself. So as a son to immigrants, I had only one option to study in the university, and it's math and computer science. Uh, my parents actually made me do that. Uh, <laughs> then I finished the second degree in economics. Okay. Um, in the army, I met my partner, Ilan, and right after the army, we met Shai, and basically in the past decade, we're undivided. Um, and we founded several companies all around data. So online data for e-commerces, then uh, analyzing um, in online gaming, then the physical world around us uh, with lanes uh, and now the blockchain wow. and actually what's amazing in blockchain is that data is so accessible and so you can just read it you don't need to work to get it and it's an amazing playground like, so for us it's yeah. heaven that's really cool. Like your um, so your parents kind of made you do these courses, but I can imagine you're not hating them for that choice right now, right? It was pretty good. No, no, no. Pretty good advice. Uh, pretty good advice from those guys, I would say, right? Yeah. Well, my father is a software developer in Assembler. He works. Wow. 
right uh -huh. now. So, and the average age of his team is, I think, around 70. <laughs> Wow, that's so interesting. Like, it's, it's so that's that's really cool. That's really cool. And then, so the team that you've been working with, you guys met um, through through life, basically, and you haven't you've been stuck together ever since, right? So, tell us yeah. a little bit about those guys. Like, uh, what do they bring to the Odin project? Like, what kind of skills do they bring? Like, what are you all passionate about? Um, well, uh, as I said, uh, we're three partners, and we have four more. Uh, teammates actually in, in our family uh, that were for several years already together so nice. uh, we go way back uh, Shai is the CEO and responsible for all the business development uh, Elon is the CTO he's by far the smartest guy uh, <laughs> Did he, did he tell you to say that, Alan? Like, is that part of the... Uh, no, it's actually the case, you know. He can solve any problem. Basically, when I'm trying to explain something to him, yeah. he will never understand me, and then he will go, come back with a solution, and say, okay, that's good. That's how it works. <laughs> a, yeah. useful, a useful member of your team, it sounds like, absolutely. Uh, definitely. 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 <laughs> uh, so I try to tell him what I think I want, and then he'll come come up with a solution. And usually, it's it's a good one. <laughs> nice. You've got a strong team. You guys have got a tight. One of the greatest things I think about working with people that you've known for a long time and that you've worked with for a long time is that you know you can kind of you can have debates and you can have arguments and you can dis discuss things at a, at a heated level, but the next day you're all friends again. And you come back and you realize that you know you're all working towards the same goal so i think it's a very nice system to have there it's very cool but um what's led you to kind of working in this area of kind of smart contract security and looking at the security of assets because it did occur to me that you've been in this space for quite a long time you're you're not a newbie to blockchain and crypto so did something happen, Alan? Did something happen in your life that meant that you wanted to then focus on, on security, basically? Is there something you can share with us there? Uh, yes, of course. So what happened was like the Ola hack happened. Uh -huh. And so actually we're a, a team that is mainly working around data. So not security per se. Mm -hmm. And our approach here is to look at the network, at the wallets, and not at the smart contract. So there are other, other companies that do penetration tests and audits. Uh, so it's important. This is one layer. The other layer is the behavior layer. So this is where we come. And how we got here, as I said, was the hack. And well i lost a few shekels there and i i had to choose if like i could be very very upset about it or do something about it yeah and i chose to be very very upset <laughs> <laughs> for several days uh, and then we started uh, investigating reading the post-mortem looking at data and the idea idea came to mind that well how is it like how is it possible like a very very simple idea and why this wallet was able to do what you wanted to do to exploit and it's because basically now uh, when a wallet wants to interact with a smart contract he's like any other wallet everyone yeah. is a clear slate you don't know nothing about them and if a wallet asks you for a million dollars and the code says you should give it to him, he will take a million dollars. And so the Odin approach, we can say, is basically there are good guys and bad guys. And the good guys want to use the DeFi ecosystem and enjoy what it has to offer. Mm -hmm. And bad guys want to exploit. Uh, this is their goal. And if this is what they want to do, they need to hide themselves and try to run with the funds. Okay, if they succeeded, 
what they will do. They will run for the bridge, go to the mainnet, and I don't know, hide in Tornado Cache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a very clear pattern um, in many, many hacks. Uh, so if we give the opportunity to the contract to know who's approaching, this guy is, we, we call it credit worthy. Yeah. And we see his entire history. We see how it works with other protocols, how much uh, asset he has locked in every different protocol. So you can work with him. Uh, if there's a new one with absolutely no history. Yeah, how do you manage that? Yeah. It's not for sure that it's a hacker, but at least we should limit what this user can do. Mm -hmm. uh, and just by doing that, uh, you can probably uh, block, I think, between 80 and 90% of hacks and limit the losses, I think, even in higher percentages. That was one of the things that just um, came into my mind, actually, about if you're a bad actor in this space, then there's nothing to stop you from creating a new wallet address to then go every, every single time you want to do something, you create a new wallet address. So I was going to ask, you know, how do you deal with the wallets that have got no history? So you put like a, a limit on those wallets, right? And you kind of treat them as being newbies. Is that like kind of accurate? And you kind of say, look, you can only do X amount because we don't know you yet. Yes. And yeah. by the way, newbies, um, well, one thing is a newbie. The other thing that I don't see any reason for you to have that much amount that like for the amount you want to interact, you want a million dollars. I don't see any no history as well. Bridge, it's weird, isn't it? From another wallet, um, you know, if you have a new wallet that yeah, some other wallet passed million dollars to this wallet, and I see the other wallet with the history, like I see reason for for your funds then it's legit, okay? Yeah. Uh, but if I see a user without absolutely like no history, this is a little bit suspicious. So the so what we're talking about here is not a manual human process. We're talking about an AI data-driven process where you're machine learning, I imagine, to, to see different... So you're pulling data to see different circumstances. So... Yeah. What, what what does the process look like, Alan? For example, like um, like the different. The, how does it work in 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 reality? Like for a DAP and for an end user. So for a pro, so for a DAP like Voltage, for example, how have we integrated your tech into Voltage? Can you talk about that a little bit and tell people how that works and what it's what it brings to Voltage and how it will help people using? Okay, so. For the end user, absolutely, uh, well, at least for the uh, credit score part, mm -hmm. they don't see anything because it's an internal score that we share with the protocol and the protocol will uh, change its behavior uh, based on that. Uh, for example, uh, the protocol can offer a better user experience for users that work with certain amounts that he wants to bring into the into the protocol uh, because we have all the information right and for like users with very very low credit score maybe because they don't have any history he will the protocol can try to limit them and um, what they can do nice. so this is the basic behavior of the protocol and this will allow us to uh, mitigate risk for, for example, even if it's a hacker, and even if he succeeded, uh, he will steal less. Or it will take him much longer and more actions to steal more. Okay. Give us more time to stop. Uh, so be because we monitor not just the wallet, we monitor the protocol as well. Uh, total value lock, uh, any big changes in the TVL. Uh, some suspicious transactions that are like vary from the usual activity or yeah the, pulling data from like so how do you how would you handle that if a protocol become you see suspicious activity inside a protocol does it get 
blacklisted? Am I not allowed to interact with it? You know, how does that? Because obviously, well, the, protocol the protocol will decide. We will decide. We will not intervene here. Yeah. Uh, where we will intervene if we think that a hack happened, mm -hmm. uh, we will uh, block the bridge. This is uh -huh. why the first integration was with the bridge. Nice. Uh, because we see that if a hacker succeeded, this is the first thing that Swear he will try to do. Um, so then uh, the manual part will come that will tell the fuse guys, look, yeah. maybe something happened, check please. If everything is okay, the transaction will pass. So the user maximum uh, got some like uh, something uh, like the transaction was a little bit slower, uh, but we will not uh, block the network or something. It's very cool, man. So on the DAP side, it's literally a line of code that they can implement into their into their smart contracts, right? That can to, then to get the the score or what other information they want about every wallet that interacts with them, yeah. uh, and then the protocol decides what to do with it. Nice. It's, it's their choice. It's pretty simple, right? Like, um, yeah, when you start to think about this as an idea, and I think we spoke about this earlier, it's quite a simple premise of an idea that, and it just adds this extra layer, right? So, I mean, a billion, more than a billion dollars has been stolen, in, in and that's just in 2022. In bridge hacks, right? We've seen it. So, <laughs> some people are like, "Oh, is that a total figure?" I'm like, yeah, and we know. have halfway <laughs> or more. Uh, if and you I'm enter a bank and you say, "Okay, guys, can you please give me a million dollars?" and I say, "Okay, who are you?" Yeah, I don't know, give us something. Um, and there is the like, maybe I don't know. It's a goal or a belief that uh, encrypted code is king. Yeah. And I don't believe that. Maybe I, it's because I, I'm doing too many bugs in my code. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that the way this uh, ecosystem grows and the pace of uh, movement, like we move fast and we want to move fast. We, need, we still need like so much to do uh, to, to make a big change. So hacks will always happen. And maybe today it's a future, tomorrow it's a bug. So yeah, it will point. always be there. And the only way uh, to mitigate risk is to say, okay, these users are here just to use the protocol. They're not looking for exploits. Yeah. They're okay. Other users, we should be careful. Maybe there's a bug. <laughs> That's kind of nice as well, like the, the fact that a wallet becomes blacklisted and are they, say for example, I'm a bad actor and I'm coming in with a fresh, with a wallet that I've used in other exploits in the past and I try to connect and I try to do something and I try to remove money. Am I told, do I receive a message that says like, hey, bad guy, like what are you trying to do? Or how does that work? How is the that, process? Well, actually, um... I don't uh, like the thing blacklisted because we're part of the community that we want to allow everyone to work. Okay. Yeah. We're not blacklisting uh, people or wallets, uh, but we will uh, cap them in what they can do yeah. uh, until they show us, look, we just want to use your protocol. we want to be part of your community and sure. Come on, come on in. That's kind uh, of nice. Right? That's like innocent until proven guilty. That's that. That's exactly how it should. Yeah, be. and people should know that they work. Uh, they put their funds, and no one wants to think about uh, their funds being locked. And they're innocent users. They want to. Uh, no one wants to think that their funds will be stolen as well. Right. So I think uh, what we try to bring here is uh, increased trust. So even if a user will see that, okay, funds can be uh, locked for a certain period of time just to verify that it's legit, yeah. uh, they will be okay with it as long as we manage to stop the guy that tried to steal from them. I get it. Yeah. And increased trust is something that is very, very important because for me personally, uh, I, I'm couldn't see crypto as investable just because when I'm investing in the stock market, 
Uh, my risk is, okay, I chose a very bad uh, stock. I lost my money. Go okay, <laughs> I'm my fault. I'm a bad investor. Yeah. But I, I don't have to fear that no. someone will steal my uh, my account. Uh, it's impossible. You know? It's a really, really strong point. Like, And if we ever want to get to a place where we're talking, you know, that we talk about every every day in this world where we want these sort of, digital frictionless crypto payments to take over from the traditional system it cannot be this 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 problematic we can't oh, argue means... it needs to work better than web 2 right and until we get to that point we, we shouldn't really be trying to, to to push it down people's throats because you're kind of pushing a substandard product onto them as well so yeah i know i completely agree as well I'm, I'm just thinking like when I was working in DeFi during the summer of DeFi, and I was writing about it every week, and one of the things that they used to shout about, a DeFi protocol would say, oh, we've had an audit, we've, had, we've been audited, and they would put this little star there and say this. Now I'm starting to think that a better badge of honor would be an Odin AI badge of honor, that if, if, a, if a DeFi protocol has, is working with you, that then gives safety to their users. So they should, in theory, become a more valuable proposition. Is that how you guys are seeing it? Well, we definitely hope, hope. <laughs> hope to be there. Uh, there are many different aspects of uh, like what we can offer to the network. We started with security, with, sorry, with the insurance. Uh, and like we started with security because it started from a hack. So yeah. the first thinking, okay, how do I stop the hack? Yeah. But then as a proposition for the user, uh, we go for security, for, wow, sorry, for insurance. Right. Um, so when, think about payments, okay? Yeah. When I'm using my credit card, mm -hmm. it actually has all the keys to my bank account and I give it to the waitress here, take my bank account. Take it. Do what and you want. Do what you want. And I'm not worried. No. Because I know I'm insured, right? Yeah. I know that, that if she will do something uh, bad, the insurance company will com um, compensate me. Yeah. Okay. This is how a, a, a no-brainer situation we need uh, in the crypto payment system uh, for it to work. Yeah. Now, when we uh, put money in crypto, there is some, you know, feeling that I might. Uh, you're not. You never. You never. Might disappear. Sure. Yeah, you're not. You can't be. You can't rest easy, can you, Alan? You can't go away about your day. There's a reason people constantly check their MetaMask accounts and other things, and constantly. Are, yeah. And I think some yeah. of it is to do with safety, right? You're like, just, just, just want to check it's still there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, it's funny. Someone uh, offered me uh, to invest uh, in um, uh, in Luna. Like, All right. Oh, yeah. They give you like 20% uh, on seven. I said, look, the thing is that all the ecosystem is so dangerous that 20% is not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and this state of mind needs to change. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. And for me, and I really believe in, you know, um, eat your own dog food. For me to put funds, I want insurance. This is what I, wa I want. So I you... prefer to get lower APY, I, but I want to know that I'm insured. I think okay? that's... That's how people will come in the future. And, and on your site, it does read that you guys are so confident in like the ability to secure assets that you offer that, yeah, that's something that you're doing is offering insurance on, on these things. So yeah, let's, let, let's get into this a little bit. We've got a diagram here as well of how this kind of works and, and, and let's, let's just put this up. Uh, it's the second process, I believe. So. Yeah, Alan, can you talk to us a little bit about this process of how this kind of works and, and what's happening here? Yeah, so we offer insurance to the wallet for all its activity in DeFi, meaning all the assets that are locked outside of the wallet mm -hmm. uh, should be insured. 
why outside of the wallet because inside of the wallet if you use you know best practices you should be okay uh, if someone steals your private key there is no way for me to uh, assess this risk okay yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're smart enough uh, it will not happen mm -hmm. but the moment you put your funds in some protocol it's out of your reach and you never know if the developers uh, were audited uh, correctly or if they did some upgrade to the system and now they have a bug yeah. so these assets uh, should be insured and you should be comfortable that if anything happened uh, you're covered and the way we like we calculate the premium of the wallet is by analyzing the wallet's um, behavior with all the protocols analyzing the assets uh, in the protocol mm -hmm. uh, and how for example different protocol uh, are connected uh, you know between assets yeah. uh, so this is how we calculate uh, mm -hmm. the premium and then all the activity you can put more funds in one protocol move from one to another as long as the wallet is still in the group of protocols that he interacted with uh, when he made the insurance uh -huh. is covered okay? okay so it's very different from buying insurance now yeah that you need to think okay i put in one protocol i need to insure then i want to move from one to another i need to make changes in the insurance okay yeah uh, this is like a this is a lot of friction we need to remove that so that people uh, will insure themselves a uh, much easier uh, and so they pay a premium to insure themselves based on their credit worthy score so if they have a good rating they pay a lesser premium if their rating yeah. is not so great they pay a higher premium right just like in the exactly. normal exactly we yeah. see their behavior we see uh, how leveraged they are we see what protocols they use uh, we see the entire activity uh, this is how we calculate the premium and of course those protocols uh, should integrate uh, with our credit score so that we can mitigate uh, the hacker part <laughs> uh, meaning if we see someone that uh, his the wallet's activity should be capped then the protocol should do that uh, to you know to limit the amount that can be stolen yeah. okay. this is smart because it's like i'm thinking about those kind of flash loan attacks and things that were happening just a year ago or two years ago where the only check that was made perhaps was to see if the person had enough uh assets to cover losses right but those assets necessarily weren't theirs <laughs> And also, it was just a very simplistic way of checking, oh, okay, they have assets to cover. We haven't checked if it's theirs or how they're accessing those assets. But yes, let's make this, let's let this person operate on the platform. And it appears to me that it was like a very, this was needed all the way through and actually it just kind of evolved, <laughs> right? Like this was it's necessary. Almost someone invented a feature to help <laughs> hackers do a better job. Uh, but from the other side it's a very interesting feature and mm -hmm. i'm not sure that we should uh, like i'm sure we don't need to remove it but uh, we should add a credit score to yeah. who we allow to take this uh, flash loan it makes sense yeah. right like if, yeah. it's a legitimate uh, way to leverage yourself and to invest uh, in more smart way and the the credit score for me, I mean, you guys have basically built some proprietary tech there that re that can identify a credit score of a wallet. For me, that yeah. appears to have a wider, broader application in the crypto in the crypto world that for lending and for other things generally. You know, if we want again, if we want to see this mass adoption, then a credit score of a crypto wallet is going to be massively important for every person who wants to leverage their assets or or do anything like how do you see that in the future is that obviously you guys are thinking about this and, and how this could apply but do you think the odin credit score would become like the <laughs> the standard credit score of in the world you know 
Well, um, I'm sure that, well, there are more companies uh, that provide a credit score. Sure. And I don't think we want any one company to provide a credit score mm -hmm. uh, because the, the way you cal calculate the uh, credit score will not be um, public. Uh, because if you put it uh, publicly, then the hacker has yeah. a very, very easy way to increase its credit score. Yeah. Uh, you should public, uh, uh, public it, you know, like guidelines, what, what we think it's important uh, yeah. for a wallet, uh, but not the whole uh, yeah. algorithm. Yeah. Meaning that you need several companies uh, that you know, each one of them will give you a credit score and you will use, I don't know, like an average or yeah, that's, a that's weighted true. average for uh, all of them. That way we will have a system that uh, without any, you know, one police company and it should be much more trusted than the financial system. Yeah. So basically we're not trying to invent something from scratch uh the financial system is well they solved a lot of problem and we just want to make their the thing that they already did just without the fuck ups you know like uh, <laughs> yeah exactly right well there um, was something mark said to me the other day about the the financial system it really like stuck in my head and he was saying all of it was invented before the internet and yes. <laughs> and then when when he said it i thought wait a minute he can't be right about this but then actually yes he's exactly 100% correct even just saying that out loud it sounds pretty stupid that we're still using that system well my father uh, is developed a product uh, that basically huge companies and banks use and he's a, an assembler developer and the average age of his team is around 70. no nice. like, i'm not exaggerating legacy at, at its finest Seriously. Right? so so <laughs> the banks will have to move somewhere there are no more people that <laughs> code in assembler that's, that's a good that's a good point alan i never thought about that that they're actually yeah, there won't be anybody around to service that industry. Actually, that's a really good point. And anybody who could is probably not going to be interested in doing it. Yeah. Strong, strong point, strong point. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really, it's, a, it's an interesting topic, I think, to do with credit scores and to do with the safety and security of users in DeFi. I think it's something that we need to see. We, we, we've been through these phases of kind of hype and yield farming of, 8 million percent APYs that are just unsustainable. Like, it's crazy to, to think this would happen. So the other well, thing um, is the kind of... So obviously the integration with Fuse is, is, is why we're here. And that's what we're kind of talking about a little bit today as well. So the integration into Voltage. I mean, can you just... There's benefits here for DAP developers. And could you just kind of outline just once again, you know, the benefits for DAP developers now and then as we roll out this integration in the future as well you know what kind of upgrades can we expect as well how can we deeper integrate odin uh, so from the start uh, increasing trust uh, in offer insurance to the end user uh, giving them uh, the users the opportunity to be more relaxed uh, when working with a uh, voltage knowing that uh, their assets are safe um, and the credit the credit score part is something that will uh, enable actually a new like a new new dApps uh, yeah. on the ecosystem so you, you can do more complicated stuff uh, and offer better user experience for wallets that you wish to offer them uh, a better user experience. Um, no, that's it. That's the that's enough. Like that's a great feature to add and be able to have that, right, Alan? Like I think. Yeah, and and as as we see it for for the entire ecosystem to mm. to show the, the community, look, guys, uh, yeah, we, we got you covered. 
That's it, right? It, it, it's Voltage saying to their users, look how we compare to other dApps now in the, in the ecosystem that are not using systems like this. We, yeah. we care about our users. And I think in DeFi, that's really important message to put out because as we know, we've seen a lot of protocols come and go very quickly. Okay. And we know why they were here and what they were doing. And we've got to shake this away. Like this is not what we, you and I are here for, right? This is not the industry we're trying to build. These but we just... still want to allow every yeah. team to come up. Maybe it's a good idea. And yep. if it's not, they will disappear. Yeah. But uh, th the community yes. uh, will stay. And so we want to advance fast. Uh, and we want to, for example, even for this kind of protocols, we want to risk them, risk the system, right? Yeah. Uh, and tell the community, look, guys, yep. you want to put your funds there and they give you higher yield, of course, because they want to bring you in. Just so you know that uh, if you choose to insure yourself, if anything happens, the premium will be more expensive. Yeah. Okay. That way you actually encourage protocols to do things that will lower their insurance premium. So users will go to them and will be covered. And that way you bring, you, like, you make the whole ecosystem safer. Yeah. Because now the protocol have like bigger incentive uh, to be safer. It makes a lot of sense. And I think um, and one thing I'm thinking about, Alan, because we're talking about this now, is that have you guys thought about the idea of providing a list of like accredited DeFi protocols on different blockchains, for example, and saying this has been rated as a, I don't know, a five out of 10, this one's a seven out of 10. Is this that, is what we have internally, actually. You have that internally? We didn't think of, like, publish it. Uh, but at the moment, we're uh, on Fuse. So yeah. uh, there's no need for it. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe in the future. Yeah, it's... Roll out in the future. I'm just it's thinking, just, like, um, yeah. it's kind of interesting. Because obviously, for consumer protection, like uh, websites like Dapp Radar, for example, that list all the DeFi dApps that you've got. I'm just thinking out loud about how it could integrate in a trust score, you know, because that's something that I believe they are keen to have, you know, to give consumers a trust score on a dApp. So infinite amounts of potential, uh, Alan, I think so. But early days for your platform, right? And um, I just wanted to kind of pick your brains on the how you see the, the current state of, of the market, and I, I see a drive towards Web3 adoption, Web3 payments. I, I think it's happening, but, you know, I'm kind of in this echo chamber of crypto. But so I always like to ask my guests, you know, how are you? How do you see it right now? And, and how do you think Odin is going to fit into that bigger picture moving forward? Um, it's funny because we actually entered crypto just in the middle of all the mess. <laughs> and it was a very um, bumpy ride. Uh, but the good part that it feels that people uh, talking with us, people want to develop, people want to integrate. Uh, so much less talks about the price is this or the price is that. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, it, even the developers are more concentrated on, on work than thinking if their assets went Check up or out. down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so no need to check, you know, the like coin market cap or something. They, they, they know they're poor for the time being. <laughs> yeah. It's builders, it's builder season, isn't it? Right. And people keep saying it. And I think for projects that want to get their head down and focus and have a clear path and goal, this is a great time because the distractions have been calmed. And I think it's really nice. It's a nice time, actually. Like I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, and you know, like half a year ago, uh, and I look at it as, as an investor from the side, mm -hmm. that every, you know, protocol tried to put some insane API or APYs that were unsustainable, but they need to uh, bring users. So yeah. they wanted to show themselves and the way to show themselves were like doing unsustainable stuff. 
Uh, now it's calmer and you can concentrate on like offering something real. A real product. Yeah. yeah. And you like people will look at you and say, okay, is this sustainable or not? Uh, can it work or not? Uh, in a, like, yeah, like protocols or, or on, on APY, like competing over high yield. We might see them competing over security aspects and safety. The lower exactly. the yield, the safer the platform, potentially, right? Exactly. So now you can, your offering is not like the yield, it's mm -hmm. the yield, the trust, the security, yeah. um, more aspects around. Um, the total package, the right? Life finance. Yeah of what people should expect in finance, some some cover, some security. I mean, this is money at the end of the day that we're talking about here, and it's been such a wild west for the last... I mean, I'm amazed that many people want to be involved in this crazy crypto world because of how it can... One day you're rich, the next day you've been hacked. <laughs> like it's, uh... And I can say being hacked is, is, is so... Oh, I've had, it. I've had it too, Alan. I've had it too. It's not fun. Except it's not fun. Those. But so. afterwards, I can say that I have never been so uh, sure in this uh, industry. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And like I studied uh, economics and finance and the financial system can benefit so much. Um, we will know, we will not, you know, um, destroy the financial system but every bank and every insurance company will need to offer us a better service yep. or disappear yep. and they will just offer us much better service and that's a great outcome for for everybody absolutely that's good. That's good final words, Alan. Good final words, I think, there. So, yeah, I mean, we've done, we've come to the end of the session for today, but I think we've done a really nice job of kind of outlining what Odin is, what it does. And um, one of the things we need to get out there is obviously that uh, there could be developers listening who are thinking, I want to integrate Odin into my, into my platform or even into other networks. So right now we're integrated with Fuse, which gives Fuse a very competitive advantage and gives Voltage a nice advantage as well. Um, but yeah, any final shout outs, Alan, anybody, where, where can people connect with you if they're in, really, we've interested them and they want to learn some more? Where can they reach out to you? Uh, so they can reach me through Telegram. They can reach us through our website. Mm -hmm. um, about the Fuse Network, actually, I really, really want to thank like Fuse community, Fuse developers, uh, Mark, uh, especially because when the hack happened and i came to him with an idea uh, he told me he won like he was devastated from the hack and he told me, like look i want to take fuse uh, to the next level of you know security uh, trust and i'm just feeling lucky that i can be part of this journey nice. and like it's amazing to see the changes and the progress I think the thing that impresses me the most with Fuse is the kind of laser focus on a on a on a vertical. Like there's so many blockchains, so many L1, L2 solutions, then not many of them seem to have a hyper focus. Many of them seem to be quite kind of scattered in their approach to what they're doing. But what I really love about Fuse is that laser focus, like 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 I said, and I think with these the tools that we're integrating so our developer community can build better products that that serve the vision that we have because it's very easy to kind of rack up a bunch of dApps that serve no true purpose but <clears throat> that's really not what we're here to do so yeah in integrations with things like odin is super exciting for us as well because it means that we can give a better product and that our users will finally you know have the things that we wanted them to have from the beginning so it's very cool it's very cool Alan. And I think much more to come from Odin and, and you guys as well as we keep progressing. And like I said, it's it's early days, right? You've just started at, in, on your journey. So if yeah, anybody out there is listening and they're interested to give uh, Alan a shout and try to, you know, talk about their, their, their products, then, yeah, all the links will be in the YouTube description at the bottom there. 
So, Alan, any final shouts from you today? Maybe just to say thank you or, yeah, a little shout. Well, uh, definitely. Thank you. Thanks for the Fuse community. Uh, and we can't wait to show you more interesting stuff that we're working on That's right it. now. That's it. So if you want to go check it out, the website's at the bottom there going across the screen. All the links are in the description as well. You can go and check out. Uh, everything that Odin does and how they offer. And I would say the website is very cool. And when you land on it, you're like a kind of need to look through it. And the strap line that you had, how safe are your assets right now? It did make me think, Alon. I was like, you know, <laughs> you know what? That's a good point. I need to just go and check. So, I didn't yeah. think about it enough before Ola. So now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> you had it every day, right? Yeah. Tattoo across your back. But it's an important thing. It's an important thing. And it's a question that everybody should ask when they wake up every day. How important are my assets right now? How safe am I when I'm interacting in DeFi? I think it's a huge thing. And as if we're going to get to where we want to go, these are the questions that people need to start asking and we need to start giving solutions. Actually, when we get to where we want to go, um, people will stop asking themselves this yes. question. Yes. It will be a given. In exactly yeah. the way that you said about your credit card, 30 years of human conditioning means that we spend money on the credit card knowing without even thinking or stopping for a moment, we're safe. To some exactly. degree, we're safe. And that is why they're so successful, right? Because they've given that safety to a bunch of people that need it. We need it as humans. We need to feel safe. So yeah. good work, Alan. Good work and good work with your team. So it's very cool. So, right. That's all the time Thanks. we've got for today. So we're going to wrap up the session. So I just want to say a big thanks to Alan for taking time out of his day to come and educate people about Odin and what it can do. I think it's a very cool product and I think people should go and check that out. So while we firmly believe that dApps and including uh, cross-chain bridges, they will eventually mature to a level where hacks and exploits become a bit of a rarity. But we are not there yet, guys. So this is an important uh, process. So in the current conditions, some dApps and their users may benefit significantly from incorporating the kind of tools that Odin is building. So go and check it out and see what you think. So as we said, as a starting point, Odin's tech has been integrated into the Fuse multi-chain bridge on Voltage Finance. And that really does mean that Voltage users are that little bit extra protected than other DeFi protocols out there. So again, it gives us that little edge and it's very cool. So the approach makes it possible to prevent malicious actors from committing hacks and exploits on Fuse from bridging the illicitly obtained tokens out of Fuse network blockchain. So to some extent now, yeah, one of the most protected networks. So other projects on Fuse that are interested in enhancing the security of their products can also benefit from Odin. So either give us a shout or reach out to Alan directly, and I'm sure he'll be more than happy to talk to you and help you there as well. It's just a few lines of code and it plugs straight in. So yeah, you can offer insurance to your, to your users through Odin. All right, Alan, thank you again for today. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you, everybody, for taking time out of your days and listening to us two guys ramble on. Um, we'll be back soon with lots more content. Thank you, Fusers. Much love. Take care, and we'll see Thanks you soon. So much.